Hey everybody, today we're talking about Batman Beyond the White Knight number one. Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I am your host, Brent Casino, and today we're talking about Batman Beyond the White Knight number one. Now, this is the third series based off Sean Murphy's um, Batman White Knight book right here. I was looking for that deluxe edition. Um, so this is the deluxe edition, the first one that launched everything, and then you follow, it was followed up by Curse of the White Knight, followed up again by a miniseries that he helped write, uh, but didn't draw or anything like that, called Harley Quinn White Knight. It's um, over here somewhere. Here we go. Presents Harley Batman White Knight presents Harley Quinn. So Batman Beyond the White Knight is kind of the third volume instead of that side story about uh, Harley Quinn. It's written and drawn by Sean Murphy, just like this volume. I don't have the first issue in hand because I bought it on my iPad because I intend to pick up the eventual hardcover and deluxe edition. I think there's a, like, didn't they announce a deluxe edition of Curse of the White Knight? I've got the hardcover. I guess I'm going to pick up the deluxe because I love, love, love this world and this series. Um, I wanted to talk about the first issue because it was a strong first issue, just like White Knight or Curse of the White Knight, anything else that Sean Murphy's done in the last couple of years. Um, so this is the idea of taking the Batman Beyond character, Terry, Terry McGinnis, who we do meet for a brief time in this, in this first issue, but we quickly shift focus back to Bruce Wayne, uh, Jason Todd, Dick Grayson, all the characters from the first two volumes and spend most of our time with them. But we are introduced to Terry McGinnis and it does seem, at least based on some of the promo art or covers, that this is his story. Um, although that's what we're led to believe, what's actually gonna happen I think is maybe something different. I'm kind of thinking that the Batman Beyond character, Terry McGinnis, might be the villain or do some sort of like villain switch teams team up with Batman, Bruce Wayne, um, as opposed to being solely focused on his character. So there's a lot of twists in this issue. If you think you know the Batman Beyond thing uh, that you're gonna read in this book based off the animated series, take that and throw it away. We're not doing that. Uh, mainly what we're doing in this issue is taking the, what happened at the end of Curse of the White Knight, which was everybody found out Bruce Wayne became, was Batman. He kind of gave up his fortune. He donated it to the city so that they could do philanthropic things with it. Uh, you know, fund hospitals, homeless shelters, programs for people to better themselves, that kind of thing. And we kind of fall into this trope, which I was kind of disappointed to see that, you know, it seems like it's been uh, not quite 20 years later because Harley Quinn's kids are teenagers. So we'll call it 12 to 15 years later, right? Because um, they were toddlers in the Harley Quinn series. But very quickly, you have... Gotham looking like Neo Gotham from the animated series from Batman Beyond, right? But very quickly we have the kind of trope that I was most disappointed to see, which is, hey, a great thing happened at the end of the last volume. And then very quickly we kind of skipped over the parts and then all of a sudden it's turned into this nasty thing. You find out that Derek Powers, again, the villain from Batman Beyond, the glowy radiation guy, right? Um, he was somehow involved in the Wayne um, fortune and Wayne tech took that money from the uh, Wayne Foundation, so to speak, and then turned it into the Powers Corporation and kept that company alive. And then, you know, kind of built a robotic Batman squad or the GTO, the Gotham Takedown Organization, whatever it was called, is now this like Batman-esque uh, Gestapo and they've separated entirely from the GCPD. Like there's two separate police forces. That's an interesting idea. But what was most interesting about the end of Curse of the White Knight, which Sean Murphy just dismantled in his own book, was the fact that everybody knew who Bruce Wayne was and that he was Batman and he gave up his fortune because the Waynes were an imposter and they stole the, you know, the identity a long, long time ago um, from the Azrael family. Like uh, That whole thing was the masterstroke of Curse of the White Knight. And you just dismantle it in the first issue. I was just like, oh, what a cool ending to that that you just totally took away. So that was the biggest bummer for me in terms of reading this book. Now, that's not to take away that this book is still a great first issue. Don't get me wrong. That, that was just the thing that I most enjoyed about Curse of the White Knight, other than it featuring Azrael in the Asbad suit and all that stuff that I'm a fan of. 
Um, that ending idea of kind of dismantling Batman automatically gets undone 12 years later. Uh, and, and the fact that uh, nothing actually got done, nothing good actually came of that, is a big bummer and a big disappointment. Uh, I think if Bruce were coming back to a world where stuff had been done, it may be a little bit different, but the, he's just driven by this fact to, like, to escape from the prison he's still in because he finds out that his fortune went to bad things rather than good things. Uh, okay, that's a motivation for Bruce to break out, but as a reader who loved that ending, that's, that's a big bummer. But getting away from all that, um, there's other things here, right? So seems like Derek Powers is the guy in the chair for Terry McGinnis here in this world, not Bruce Wayne. Uh, and then you have Red Hood, Jason Todd, who apparently is getting his own miniseries, which was kind of announced in the books saying like, check this out, we're gonna check it out later. Um, he's still a prison guard, and we saw him at the end of Curse of the White Knight, and I think we saw him a little bit in the Harley Quinn series, but now he is uh, basically saying he's got his own Robin, but he was also, he was Bruce's first Robin. He wasn't killed by the Joker, he just got disappeared, and that drove Bruce to go and find Dick Grayson. He returned to Batman, saw Dick Grayson there, and got really upset, and then kind of goes on his own journey, and I guess we'll catch up with that journey in that other miniseries. So there are cool twists that Sean Murphy's putting on the Bat universe in order to make it his own. And I do enjoy when he does those things. It's just when you cut the legs out from your own ending in the second book, it's just like, ugh. Now, this is only the first issue out of a planned eight, I believe, just like the last uh, two ser series. So it's still early on. So this is just my reaction to that first issue. Again, Sean Murphy doing the art um, Matt Hollingsworth doing the colors, doing the same great job they did on the last two volumes. Really interested to see everything here. Um, the Terry McGinnis costume is very reminiscent of the Batman Beyond costume. In fact, it doesn't change much. It just adds a little extra splashes of red because Sean Murphy's inks are so dark. He tends to use a lot of shadow, so I think he's adding some more red to the costume to break it up a little bit, which I don't mind at all. Um, he said in the afterward of that, I think maybe it was on his Instagram or something, but he tried to change the costume a little bit and just found that that design is just so good that anything he could come up with wasn't any better in his mind or that much different that it justified its own existence. So that's kind of cool to see that uh, the Batman Beyond design is so simple, it's so striking, it's so good that it stands the test of time when other people are trying to subvert it or reinvent it, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, so I guess to say all that, I'm excited to read more of this book, and I think you should definitely check out this first issue. Um, yeah, I'm a little bummed about the beginning of it or you know, regarding the ending of Curse of the White Knight, but to see Bruce and Jason Todd on a journey to stop this young new Batman because they think this suit's dangerous and he's involved with Derek Powers, and I think we're gonna get a lot of story about reclaiming the Wayne legacy or the Wayne money and all that stuff that Bruce left to the city. I think that will be a very interesting part of the book. So I'm hoping we follow up on that in future issues. Um, so the cover will lead you to believe it's a Terry McGinnis story in this first issue, but it's really more about Bruce. And I'm happy with that, that we're not just abandoning Bruce after the first two volumes and to see his evolution here. So it seems like a big comeback for Bruce Wayne in terms of this volume. So if we're going beyond the White Knight, um, you know, I'm all for it. Again, White Knight, to me, was always about Harley Quinn. She was the White Knight in the story, not necessarily Batman Bruce Wayne. Um, she is in this book, um, so I'm hoping that she gets a, a bigger role in her... It seems like there's stuff going on with her kids. Her kids are teenagers. They're rediscovering things about their father, who is Jack Napier, or is it the Joker, or is it both? That kind of thing, these twins. Um, so that looks to be an interesting storytelling angle here. So... It's kind of advertised as a Batman Beyond comic book by Sean Murphy. It's really not. It's really 12 years after Curse of the White Knight. And Batman Beyond is the iconography we're using to sell that book, I think is kind of where it's going to go. But I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that because I loved everything, in the, everything that's come out of this universe so far. White Knight, Curse of the White Knight, the Harley Quinn series is also great. So if you haven't checked any of those out, I highly recommend you go check those out. Great twists on Batman exists in its own world. Uh, go and read that, and then come back and read Beyond the White Knight, number one, and let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this book. I'm interested to read more. I'm excited, a little bit bummed, but um, 
again, the art, I, I love Sean Murphy's art, big fan of his. So uh, we will see where it goes from here and we will check in with the book at the end of the story, probably when it comes out in collected edition and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, I don't know, a year from now or something like that. So we will see you guys down below in the comments and we'll see you guys next time in the funny pages.